In 1905, Carl Graham Fisher first came up with the idea of building a three-mile speedway in Indianapolis. It took him a few years, but by 1908, he convinced James Allison and a few of his business partners into purchasing the property for $72,000. Soon after, the original plans were downsized from a three to two-mile oval. Construction began in March of 1909, and by June of that year, they held their first ever event, a healing gas-filled balloon competition. In August of that year, they hosted their first motorsport event, but a change in marketing focus led to only one race per year beginning in 1911. Fast forward over a hundred years later, and that very same race is now considered the spectacle of racing. The Indianapolis 500 is without question the most prestigious race in the world. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway is the most historic track in the world, but there was a time where it was completely abandoned, nearly ending the most prestigious race in all of motorsports in the 1940s. In the Indianapolis 500's 100-year history, it has been canceled six times. Two weeks before the United States entered World War I, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway announced the threat of war and had prompted track officials to cancel the race. The track noted that the skills and talents of the mechanics could be better utilized by the government than for entertainment purposes. The US the US Army chose the Speedway to be sites for aviation repair and they were thrust into wartime service. The Indianapolis 500 wasn't ran in 1917 and 18 but resumed after the war in 1919. Eight years later in 1927, the track would change in leadership. In 1927, Carl Fisher and his partners decided to focus on other business interests. They sold control of the Speedway to a group of investors headed up by American hero Eddie Rickenbacker. Rickenbacker, who had driven in all but one of the pre-war races, had become America's ace of aces during the war, shooting down 26 enemy aircraft with only five weeks of training. Under his leadership, the Speedway and race continued to thrive, not only overseeing a series of improvements to the track, but also keeping the track open through the Depression years. While World War II began with the German invasion of Poland on September 1st, 1939, the United States didn't get involved in the war until after the Japanese attacked of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. Over 2,400 people tragically lost their lives that day, and it thrusted the United States into World War II. On December 28th, just 21 days after Pearl Harbor, Reckenbacker announced that the Indy 500 must once again give way to the demands of war. Tradition and priorities demand that we voluntarily suspend the race in the interest of a full-out victory. Earlier that year, Floyd Davis and Maurice Rose were co-winners of the Indy 500. 500. After on lap 72, Davis came in for a pit stop and was relieved by Rose. They would hold the title of defending Indianapolis Motor Speedway champion for four straight years. From 1942 to 45, the Indianapolis 500 wasn't ran because of World War II. The Speedway hoped that once again the government would make use of their facilities, just like in World War I. However, this time around, the government declined, and by July of 1942, they had banned auto racing entirely. This essentially left the track completely abandoned. It is hard to believe that this image we're looking at is the famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway, dating back to the early 1940s. Once again, the Speedway closed during the century's Second World War. This time, though, it was put to no useful purpose. Weeds overgrew the track, and grandstands were no longer grand. It was in deplorable condition. The track completely deteriorated during this time span. These images and footage are so similar looking to what North Wilkesboro had looked like for many years after it was left abandoned. As the end of the war came in sight, curious onlookers wanted to know what would happen to the famous Speedway. World War II officially ended on September 2nd, 1945, but a year earlier, Reckenbacker was in the market for a potential buyer and found the man that would save the Speedway. Rickenbacker wanted to sell, and in 1945, the dashing driver Wilbur Shaw found a willing buyer, Anton Holman Jr. of Terre Haute. It was going to take another dreamer to look at the 500, which was an abandoned 
weed patch and decide that this could be brought back to the glory days. Its novelty had worn off. It was going to be a very expensive proposition to rebuild it, and there was no guarantee that money put into it would ever work because by now there's competition. There's competition for entertainment, there's competition in the racing field, and Tony Hellman looked at the track and decided that it would be a good business proposition. Tony Hellman bought the Speedway for an undisclosed amount, believed to be $750,000. By 1946, the track was ready for racing, and so was the country. The war was over. There was a renewed interest in automobiles, since they were once again being mass-produced. People wanted entertainment. They wanted family outings. In short, they wanted the Indianapolis 500 race back into their lives. Tony Holman wondered if many people would come, but on race day, there was a massive traffic jam. He then knew the race would survive and thrive. I guess you could say the rest is history. After purchasing the Speedway, Tony Holman's mother had famously told him to tear it all down and start over. Tony left convinced that the track needed to be restored to its former glory. To see his vision of restoring the track go through, Holman committed another quarter of a million dollars to track improvements. And from 1946 on, the Indianapolis 500 rose as the most prestigious race in the world. A great racing tradition started way back in 1911 continues today over a hundred years later. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway has a deep and rich history, but without question, there were dark times, with all of the fatalities that haunted the track for years. But one could argue that the darkest part in the track's rich history was when it was left completely abandoned. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.